Today we're going to do a brief demonstration on the Cyrus Indecision Engine. This particular demo will not go into the details of the under the hood design or talk through the actual configuration. All it's going to show you is a demonstration of it working uh, both in the console and within the portal itself. If you have any questions please let your sales engineer know and they should be able to answer those or get the answers for you. So in the demo today, we're going to work through two examples here in the console first and then move into two quick examples in the portal. So the first example, as we begin, uh, I've already created the service requests themselves. We're going to go ahead and open one of those service requests and take a look at the structure of it. So underneath the activities here, we can see there's a sequential activity and then a manual activity. These two together make up the actual decision activity. Opening up the manual activity, you can see it has been modified with a decision field. <clears throat> so up here in the upper right, we have our activity decision where we can state yes, no, or decision needed. Decision needed is an indicator that this is a decision activity that has not been filled in yet and no decision has been made. In this particular case, it's set to no. Uh, we didn't have the engine running before, and but it is running now, so we're going to go ahead and click OK and apply. And then we're going to wait for it to perform the actual process. In the meantime, while we're waiting for the background uh, run book to run, we're going to go ahead and open up another example SR that we've created. We're going to take a look at this one as well. Underneath the activities, we see we have our decision uh, activity which is a combination of the sequential activity and the manual activity again. This time we have a manual activity that needs a decision to be made. In this case it's hardware deployed. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and click no. The hardware has not been deployed. And then we're going to change the title here real quick just so that I can more easily identify these uh, service requests that we're playing with. Change the other one as well. Okay, go ahead and hit OK. Now we're just going to wait for the decision engine to run and for those activities to pop up. Okay, let's open it up and see if the activities run. Alright, the script is run. It's uh, applied our dynamic template update and added a new manual activity based off our decision. We can see that uh, we said the computer was deployed yet or the computer was in stock yes and so we go straight from the computer is in stock to image computer um, so now this particular manual activity is just a standard manual activity that you would then complete like normal as you can see no decision is needed we have it indicated as such and once you complete it like normal you can then close it and it will go through the normal close process and close out the SR itself so we're going to go ahead and take a look at our uh, journal here and go ahead and close this activity to demonstrate how we can close out the service request itself. Okay, manual activity will then close, and of course, the, as the workflows in the background run, it close those out. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with the other one. Take a look at its activities. All right, and we can see here that this one here also has the manual activity, and this one is actually awaiting a decision because we said that the computer was not deployed, and so now it wants to know if the computer's in stock. So we want to then, of course, go check our stocks, and if the computer is in stock, we would say yes, and then no procurement process is required. Or in this particular case, we're going to say no, the computer is not in stock, so the procurement process isn't, is required. So there's a procurement process template within this that will then be applied to it, and we'll see additional manual activities added for the procurement process and then also the imaging process so it'll be something along the lines of order machine uh, 
configure machine, receive machine, and then image machine. So we're going to go ahead and hit apply. We've chosen no, feeder's not in stock, and now we're going to wait for it to run. And I've skipped it ahead, so we are, it did already run. Now we can see that those additional dynamic activities have been added. You can see they are not decision activities. It is order hardware, receive hardware, and image computer. So we're going to go ahead and complete these activities that were added dynamically by a decision engine and the templates that we've defined uh, previously. Go ahead and complete these activities, which will, of course, then go back through, complete the SR process, and close out the SR for us. Now we're going to take a look at the actual portal example. So here we have the portal, and from the portal we're actually going to use the quick create. We're going to create two decision engine template, uh, example template activities, uh, service requests, not activities. We're going to create two example service requests that have decision engine activities within them so we can demonstrate what it looks like here in the portal. Now there's one key difference with the portal versus the console, and that's that we dynamically hide the decision drop-down box based upon whether or not a manual activity has a decision that's required. So this is a little bit more uh, obvious and straightforward than the console, which has to show that field at all times since you can only have uh, one custom form, uh, and so it has to show that value. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. So I'm going to click on New, Service Request from Template. Choose example two first. Go ahead and rename this so that it's a little more obvious what we're working with. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and save our changes. Go ahead and create another example. This time we'll use the example template one, which only has a single tree of decisions in it. Okay, now that we've created both of those, let's go back and take a look at our first one and see if the decision has engine has run yet. And we can see that we're waiting for the review activity to go, but it has completed, so now it's ready for our decision. Go ahead and, uh, so hardware deployed. So we're going to say whether or not the hardware is deployed. So in this particular case, we'd take a look at that, same with the phone, and decide whether or not it has been deployed. If the information, and then based off of that answer, of course, we'll uh, add new activities uh, depending on our actual business process. So in this particular case we're going to say the hardware has not been deployed which means that we'll need to go through uh, we'll then need to check and see if it's in stock before going through other parts of the process. So we're going to take a look at our other example as well. Actually going to look at this one to see if the decision engine is run yet. Yes, it has. So you can see that it has run. We have one activity here that's pending, which there's nothing we can do with that right now. We need to wait for it to go in progress, waiting for the service manager workflows to pick up. This one here, uh, we didn't save our changes to this particular activity last time, so we're going to go ahead and make the change again. And then we'll save it, which we'll have to wait for the decision engine to run against that one as well. Okay, now that it's run, we're going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to take a look at it. We can see in the example here that the activities have run. The one, the second one that was added dynamically is now in progress. We can see that it's a decision activity, so the decision is there and available. 
we'll go back and look at the one we already ran. This one here, you can see that we completed. It was uh, completed by the decision engine. And we mark the description as such just so that you're aware of what completed it. So this one here needs a decision. So we're going to go ahead and say, yes, the hardware is in stock, which means we don't have to go through the procurement process. Take a look at our phone here. Reapply this decision again. Okay, now let's also look at our other example. Our other example here, when we take a look at it, we can see that the it's in progress and it's waiting for us now. So we'll go ahead and say yes, the hardware's already been deployed, which will then tell us to go straight to imaging it. Now we'll wait for the decision engine to run on those changes we just made. And once it's run, then we'll be able to open those up and continue on with the example. All right, let's go ahead and see if it's run here. Can now see that the decision engine is run and it ran on both of our processes adding in those others you can also see here that we don't have the decision drop down in that particular one because it's not an actual decision activity it's not it's a decision ma there's no decision required it's simply a manual activity where somebody needs to do something so again this is a task and it's not an actual decision so we can go ahead and uh, just complete it like we would any normal manual activity and then we can move on with the process so we're going to go ahead and uh, save this form again. We're going to go back and check on our uh, and refresh the example. And from here, with all of them in progress, we're just going to go ahead and complete it. As it's not a decision activity, neither one of those is. And that will, of course, complete our SR once the background workflows run through and update the service request. Now let's look at our single tree example. This one here is set to yes. We're just waiting for the final bit of the decision engine to run. So let's wait just a second and then we'll refresh the page. And we can see that it's run now and it's brought up our other manual activity dynamically. We can see that there's no decision here that's required so there's no drop down box that's uh, available to us. And that's the end of our example. So that's how the decision engine works and uh, in both the console and the portal. If there's any questions, please let your sales engineer know and we'll get those answers to you as quickly as we can. Thanks again.